Hey, what's up guys? This is Jonathan Lampel with BlenderDiplom.com and today I'm going to be sharing with you how to make the modern hologram effect um, in cycles that you saw in the intro animation. So, um, my example is going to be Suzanne the monkey and we're just going to jump right in. So I'm going to pull this timeline up here, switch over to the node editor, switch over to the materials tab here, click new and I'm going to name this hologram okay so now we're ready to go first thing when you think of holograms you probably think of maybe transparent transparency so let's change this diffuse to a transparent shader and just in case uh, you weren't sure I am in cycles so just be sure you're using the right rendering engine and I can go ahead and change this to rendered view so we can see what this looks like and I'm going to put a floor underneath her just so that you can see an object through okay so we have our transparency and I want it to be a little bit bluish so I'm going to crank that all the way up and let add a little bit of blue tint and I really don't like the dark areas that you can see through but we're gonna fix that at the very end so we're just going to pretend those aren't there for now. So we also want to make uh, the hologram glow a little bit. So let's add a mix shader. So we can mix that transparent shader with an emission shader. Now this emission shader, I also want it to be a little bit blue. Maybe more in the teal direction. It can be whatever color you want. And I'm going to put it up to a strength of 2. Now to mix this, I'm going to use a, a layer weight. So just go to input and layer weight. And that way we have access to both the Fresnel and the facing values. You can see kind of what they do here just by playing around with them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, uh, let's see, converter and math. And I'm just going to add these two values together. I don't think that makes a difference in this case. So I'm going to add them together with a value of about 0.15. So the majority of this is transparent, while just you know 0.15 of it is coming around the back. So we want the edges to glow. That's the point. And again, we'll fix this light coming through from the back. Uh, we'll fix that very very soon. So the next step that I want to do is add um, some wireframe just to make it look cool, a little bit stylized. So let's add another mix shader. Just Shift D to duplicate. And I'm going to add an input and wireframe. And I'll feed the factor into the factor there. And you can see that it's now mixing but we want that to be an emission so instead of being all black all of it does look kind of cool I'm going to take this and plug it right in there now you can see that those lines are way too thick so I'm going to turn on pixel size and what that's going to do is instead of making it an absolute size you know no matter how much you scroll in it's going to reference how big the pixels are so no matter how far or how close you are to the image um, or to the monkey, the, it'll always appear the same size. So I'm going to put this at a value about 0.1. So it looks nice, uh, kind of high detail when you're up close, and you can still see all that detail when you're far away. So that's kind of up to personal preference, but I found that works the best for animations. Okay, so now for the magic of getting rid of all of those troublesome places, uh, that's pretty much the only complicated part of this but it's actually not that complicated at all so we're going to take another mix shader shift D to duplicate and we're going to take this transparent shader duplicate that and we need it to be exactly white so bring all those values up and plug that in there now for the uh, factor here we're going to add an input and light path and there's a new feature in Blender 2.71, so make sure you have this version here. 
uh, where you now have a transparent depth. So now we can feed that into there and it goes away. So what this is doing is it's um, seeing how many layers of transparency it's going through. And this is saying that if there is you know, more than one, then it's going to make whatever's behind it transparent. So to show you kind of what this does a little bit more clearly, I'm going to add a math node. And we can add one. So you see that it'll make all of it transparent. So let's add a negative one. And you can see you can play, or, excuse me, play around with the values and uh, kind of get it to your liking. But I think it looks good just like that. So now we're almost done. Uh, I'm going to change the sky to be a black background just so we can see what's going on. So it looks it looks pretty good, but there's no substance to it really. And in a lot of the modern holograms that you see in maybe uh, Iron Man or Prometheus, there's, there's a little bit more substance to it that makes it more real than everything else. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a volume, uh, where is it, volume absorption right there, and I'm going to plug that in there, and I'm going to make this a nice blue, and I'm also going to add, I can just duplicate this emission shader, duplicate that over there, and mix these two together. Oh, what's happening? That was kind of weird. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to mix these two together. And you can see that the emission shader really makes a difference. Um, but it's a bit too much of a difference. So I'm going to turn that down to about 0.5. And now it's got a nice volume effect to it. And the cool thing about this shader that I like is that you can see the solid objects through it. So if you have a hand or something behind it, you can see it fairly clearly. However, if you have multiple holograms, say I duplicate this monkey head, and look through it here, you can see it, but you don't see all the annoying lines. You only see the volume that comes through. So I, um, I personally really like that. If you don't, you can always play around with these uh, transparent depth settings. Um, but that's all I've got for you. It's a pretty simple uh, material. But I found it really useful. I used it in my Iron Man picture, and I've used it in a few other little projects, not to mention the uh, intro animation. So I hope you learned a lot, and thanks for watching. Have a good one.